Derivatives are a fundamental concept in calculus that allow us to understand rates of change, slopes of curves, and much more. They are essential for analyzing how things move, grow, and evolve with precision. In our previous video on limits, we discussed how to find the slope of a tangent line passing through a point such as point A on a curve using the concept of secant lines. When we select another point, like point B, and connect it to point A with a secant line, the slope of the secant line can be calculated using this formula from algebra. Then, as B moves closer to A, the slope of the secant line approaches that of the tangent line. Using limits, we can define that as the following equation. This is known as the limit definition of a derivative. In other words, this is how the derivatives are formally defined. We can apply this formula to compute derivatives of any function. For example, to find the derivative of f of x equals x squared at x equals 2, we substitute the function into the limit definition and calculate the result. This produces the derivative function which gives us the slope of the curve at any point. For instance, at x equals 2, we plug x equals 2 into the final equation to obtain the rate of change at that point. While this is essential for understanding the concept of derivatives, it is rarely used for practical calculations. In most cases, we use predefined rules that make calculating derivatives more efficient and easy. These rules tell us what the derivative of a function would be without having to plug the function into the limit definition. This makes the process of calculating derivatives easier and more efficient. Let's look at some of these rules. For instance, the sum rule states that the derivative of a sum of functions is the sum of their individual derivatives. The power rule states that the derivative of x to the power of n is n times x to the power of n minus 1. Also, the constant multiple rule states that if a function is multiplied by a constant, its derivative is the constant multiplied by the derivative of the function. I'll leave the rest of the rules for you to investigate. Let's look at an example to demonstrate how to use these rules. Let's look at this following function. First, we apply the sum rule. This will give us the following. After, we apply the constant multiple rule and the power rule to differentiate each of these terms. Finally, we simplify to obtain the final result. As you see, the process of calculating the derivatives using these rules and properties is easier and more efficient. Beyond the first derivative, we can continue taking derivatives of functions. The second derivative, for instance, tells us how the rate of change itself is changing, which is crucial for understanding concepts like concavity in calculus or acceleration in physics. Each successive derivative provides deeper insight into the function's behavior. Now that we know how to calculate derivatives, let's explore some real-world applications where derivatives play a crucial role. For example, rate of change. Derivatives are used to calculate rates of change of different functions. For instance, in physics, derivatives are used to calculate velocity. If a function represents the position of an object over time, using derivatives, we can obtain the velocity of the object, in other words, the rate of change of the position. Another application of derivatives is calculating the instantaneous rates. For instance, in economics, derivatives measure how quantities change rapidly such as marginal cost or marginal revenue of a product. The derivative of cost function tells you how much the cost increases with each additional unit produced. And this is it regarding derivatives. Make sure to practice using the derivative rules as derivatives are essential tools for solving real world problems in physics, economics, and beyond. Thanks for watching.